It's early spring and nearly 60 people have gathered for the Central Iowa Honey Producers Annual Auction. The sale, with its reconditioned and specially made wares, caters to small-scale beekeepers that own or work with just a few colonies of honeybees. The exchange of tools of the trade carries on for only a few hours, but the more pressing matter for these apiarists is the battle to restore the U.S. honeybee population. They are in a fight to stop what is commonly called colony collapse disorder, or CCD. Arvin Fell, president of the Central Iowa Honey Producers Association, considers himself to be on the front lines. Uh, colony collapse, um, there's no magic bullet. All beekeepers are looking for a magic bullet, but I'm afraid it's not there. I think beekeepers have to be very conscientious about their job and watch their bees, and that's what we're going to have to do. We're just going to have to be more proactive uh, with, with that. While experts believe there's no single cause for CCD, they do say it's a combination of harsh weather, deadly disease, toxic chemicals, and a parasite known as the Varroa mite. In Iowa, for instance, the coldest winter in 35 years decimated honeybee populations in 2013. State officials estimate between 60 and 65 percent of the state's honeybees didn't survive. Because some of the bees were unable to get enough food, what humans prefer to call honey, they simply starved. According to some scientists, pesticides and other chemicals also have done considerable damage to bee colonies. Jason Foley, an urban beekeeper, raises Russian queen bees for sale to hobbyists and professional producers. Foley believes one way to help reduce the effects of CCD is proper placement of the hives. Year one, the bees come back with pollen. It builds up a concentration in the wax. Year two, that wax gets more concentrated, year three, four, five, et cetera, till it gets to a tipping point that these young bees are being raised in wax that is just saturated with these systemic pesticides. And the systemics affect the bee's nervous system, and that's the main thing with the neonicotoids. With the honeybee, the nervous system is affected in a way that when it hits that tipping point, they have a hard time navigating back to the hive, and they get lost. Honeybees also must battle various mites that threaten to destroy entire colonies. The Varroa mite, a parasite that attaches itself to bees and infiltrates their hives, can devastate bee populations in a few short months. The combined effect has been a decline in honeybee populations of up to 50% annually in some regions. That's a major concern for Iowa beekeepers, and it's even drawn the attention of the White House. In June, President Obama called for a federal strategy to promote the health of honeybees and other pollinators. The Agriculture Department has made $8 million available to farmers and ranchers in five states to establish new and improved honeybee habitats. In a proclamation, Obama cited USDA data indicating that honeybee pollination alone adds more than $15 billion in value to agricultural crops each year in the United States. And the continued loss of commercial honeybee colonies poses a threat to the economic stability of commercial beekeeping and pollination operations in the United States, which could have profound implications for agriculture and food. New federal guidelines notwithstanding, work has already begun at Spring Valley Honey Farms in Iowa. Besides selling raw honey by the 55-gallon drum, as well as products like beeswax candles and creamed honey, the three-decade-old operation supports 3,600 honeybee colonies and is selling bees to help resupply those who are in the fight against CCD. Basically, with the winter die-off here in Iowa, a lot of beekeepers need new bees. There's not enough beekeepers here in Iowa to produce all these. There's probably six or seven producers in Iowa that sell packaged bees to the hobbyist beekeeper so they can get new bees to start out the next year. Spring Valley also does a brisk business renting its hives to fruit and nut tree producers. After helping pollinate Iowa's orchards in the summer, the bees are shipped to the west coast for winter work 
on California's $4 billion almond crop. But without conservation efforts taken on the front lines by keepers like Fell, Foley, Ennis, and other apiarists around the country, bee populations will likely continue to decline due to parasites, pesticides, and other perils. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.